Hey, today is kind of an exciting day. So I finally found a project Jeep for off-roading and everything else. Well, it does need a little bit of work and it is in a bit of a set shape, but with a little bit of love and TLC, it'll work. Well, maybe a lot of love. Well, uh, yeah, probably more. <laughs> so, and we finally picked up the Jeep. Me and uh, Mr. Death Wobble right there, his wife. <laughs> Super. We're able to finally get it on there. Overall, it's not a, it's not a really that set of a shape. Uh, it needs to get cleaned up a little bit, get mechanical sorted out, maybe get some steering stuff done, and then uh, go wheeling, break something, fix it again. Have some death wobble. <laughs> probably has some. It's probably pretty down to happen. Got like 200,000 miles on it. So yeah, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> Once we hook up the battery, we will know. All right, peace. Next. Let's go take it home. This is the next day, and uh, we need to get this thing moving, get it started. So I have no idea if it starts or if it runs. They say the lady said that it just died basically on her. So what we're gonna do is uh, troubleshoot it, see what it comes up with. Either it's got a dead engine that we need to replace, or there's just a simple issue somewhere that we just need to find and fix it and move on, move along and get it going. So from the first observation, looks like we need to fix some ground straps this, this one's completely off looks like people have been adding extras in here we've got a bird's nest in here so and it seems like the clamp is missing and somebody tried to probably do a start, starting fluid start or something so let's kind of go over and see what's up so we came to a, to a conclusion I can't talk today so we came to a conclusion that a either a fuel pump or a fuel filter is uh you know going bad so basically the way it looks like if i prime it long enough the jeep will start if you you know you cycle the fuel pump a couple of times back and forth it does start and runs but once you press the gas it just dies out because it's not enough so looks like on these jeeps they're a little bit different than the older xj's pre-97 they don't have inline fuel filters uh, these are all built in into the fuel uh, sanding unit so most likely I'll be ordering, ordering a new one and then drop a tank and then just replace the whole fuel sanding unit with the fuel filter it's all uh, just because if I do replace the filter and then put it back in uh, most likely the fuel pump will just fall along not too far from, from it so let's uh, order up a new fuel sanding unit then come back and get that replaced all right, and it's finally time to get this thing running. So I got the fuel sending unit in. Now we got this thing onto the frame machine. So it's gonna be easier to drop the tank and get the old sending unit out. I think most likely I'll have to drain the fuel out of it because I believe there's gotta be like a full tank in there. So it swashes around pretty good. So, or at least a half a tank. So I'm gonna have to drain that up. That way it's gonna be easier to handle it. So, so far, this Jeep's been, I, I'm not sure, you know, blessing and the curse, I guess. Uh, I think it's like a jam. Uh, don't know what kind of nickname to come up with it yet, depending on how much of a pain he has it's going to be to work on it. But, yeah, uh, definitely uh, interesting uh, purchase. So, let's uh, take a look at this Jeep and kind of go over the condition of it and what needs to be done. To at least uh, get it running and then uh, go from there and just kind of build it to I'm thinking more of like an overlander so let's kind of go over what this thing has what it doesn't have or what it needs so this is a 1998 Jeep Cherokee XJ I did find out that uh, it comes with a rear limited slip so I'm gonna have to find, figure out what type of exactly rear end it has. Here, great, you know, for the $700 I got this thing for, they already came with the sliding bars, which is great. Whichever, you know, there's probably a different name for it to be more appropriate. Anyways, so yeah, this is the set shape that it's in. So far the biggest damage is, whoa, that's really light. That tailgate bashed in. And then the fender is going to have to get replaced. So that's that. I mean, obviously the tires will have to go. 
it does have a uh, looks like a three inch lift on it so I'm thinking maybe go higher uh, either four and a half to like or probably even up to like six and a half with a long arm kit Ta-da! What a shit box, right? I mean, that's what I thought when I looked inside. <laughs> it literally had a puddle in the driver's side. I was like, Jesus. Anyway, so I'll have to probably steam clean the seats or maybe just take them off completely and uh, just have them washed. Take out the carpet completely, probably pressure wash it, see if anything good comes out of it, if it's going to be looking decent. And then kind of go from there. Not sure. Enough. That's that. So, anyways, enough talking. Let's uh, get the tank drained and dropped to change out the fuel sending unit. Okay, let's do this. My goodness, I've been talking for six minutes. Jeez. All right. So, here's our progress. We drained up, uh, drained down the fuel tank just a little bit. What I did was I just shorted the relay and uh, made pump run in continuous mode. So now at this point, I removed this shield right here, untied two of the filler neck tubes, the air won't return, and then this one. That way, I can just pull it through this deal right here through the uh, unit body opening when I'm going to be taking down the tank then I already broke loose the two bolts one right there uh, and then the second one down there so those are broken loose I can just keep untying them but most likely I'll just set up my uh, impact gun on them and just uh, take them down more that way I can loosen them up and unhook them from the body of the car I already have one of the vacuum lines from the tank unhooked now what I have left is that wiring right there that comes from the tank to unclip and then that uh, sending line from the tank as well to uh, take apart
you have a Jeep, right? Yeah. Look at that mess. That came out of there. So, yeah. Whoa, yi -yi. Oh, that was a piece of work. Had to cut one of the bolts to hold the strap down. That was fun. factory install or somebody already had the fuel pump replaced on this but when they put that in the seal right here was kind of was, was set up like that so that's kind of interesting very curious how did that happen so whether they were just kind of in a hurry to put that in or someone bleeped up while they were installing it and perhaps it was sucking up extra air, you know, and causing all sorts of uh, check engine deals. there you have to remove it from the old pump that's on this little nozzle so I put it back on here put the line back on now I'm, re now I'm ready to stick that big back big bad boy up into that thing like up its ass okay well let's see how that's gonna go
perfect. And then we should take it out, I guess. Anyways, let's give it a test run. See if she runs. If everything's okay. If I need to, or if I need to change any of the pinouts on a pump's plug. So yeah, let's give it a run. So I got this huge Mercedes battery hooked up to it. it should be enough power to turn it over. As you can see. If you're going to be working on something like this, that will get a close that you know, I'm not really going to care too much about. Because the car is pretty old and all that dirt, all that you know, dust, uh, soup and stuff. Just so, yeah. So the fuel pumps back in, the car starts, we got the light of approval, <laughs> the check engine light. So we're gonna have to do a couple things on this thing. Uh, I'm thinking leaning towards a nickname called Ruby, since she is red and she has a bit of like, you know, uh, a gemstone in the rough or a gem in, or a rough gem kind of deal. Um, it's gonna be a bit of a project here. So I wanna build it up more to where go overlanding, off-roading, whatever. You know, not beat it up completely, but have some fun with it basically. Go up in the snow if I can and all that. So that means that the front axles will have to get redone. The rear axle is gonna have to get, you know, freshened up, upgraded, and maybe put some stresses on it to uh, handle bigger wheels and more load. Definitely, probably long arm kit for sure. And uh, kind of go from there, but before all that, Eliminate all the issues with the engine, transmission, if there's any engine mounts, transmission mount, uh, front end suspension stuff, like belt joints, whatever. And just kind of uh, work our way from there. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys kind of like this thing, even though it's not, you know, glorified like some of the other guys do it. You know, I'm just a dude on YouTube trying to share something that I like to do on my free time. Anyways, thanks for watching. Until next time, stay tuned.